This is General Electric Broadcasting, WNGE, Nashville. From Nashville, this is News Watch 2 with Teddy Bark, Tom Donovan, Meteorologist Davis Nolan, Sports Director Jim Bond, and reports from Hank Allison and Jerry Brown in our regional bureau. Good evening. Time has finally run out on elusive Nashville racketeer Tim Collins. On the run for more than two years, Collins and his Nashville girlfriend Sherry Frazier were picked up in Canada last week. Using the alias Donald Jackson at the time of his arrest, Canadian officials today positively identified Jackson as the sought-after Tim Collins. The Nashville fugitive was convicted on an array of federal charges and escaped custody just prior to beginning a 13-year prison stretch. Besides wanting Collins back in jail, Nashville officials also want him back in town in order to question him about possible ties with several prominent Nashville politicians and police officials. That questioning may lead to an appearance by Collins before a federal grand jury. Newswatch 2's Jeff Eller is with us live tonight from Calgary, Canada, where Collins was in court today. What's the scene now, Jeff? Teddy, tonight a United States Marshal is here in Calgary where he's expected to question Tim Collins sometime within the next couple of days. It was the Marshals who were looking for Collins after he escaped from the Murray County Jail. It was a search full of unanswered questions concerning leads, and it was a search that took them all over the United States. Finally, the question of where is Tim Collins was answered last week. The long search for Tim Collins ended here when the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, acting on a tip, arrested him. They found two ounces of cocaine and a pistol. From there, they went here to where Collins and his girlfriend, Sherry Frazier, were living. In the residence, there were numerous, approximately 45 to 50 stolen credit cards, which are connected with uh, a rash of house break-ins in the Silver Springs area of Calgary, going back to July 81. It was those credit cards that led the Mounties to contact officials in Tennessee. Finally this morning, fingerprints confirmed his identity. Today, Tim Collins sat quietly handcuffed in Canadian Provincial Court, where a judge ordered him to stay behind bars until another hearing in September. Collins' quiet behavior today followed the same pattern set when he was questioned by the Mounties. He's very calm, very cool, uh, uncooperative. He wouldn't answer any questions, uh, basically along that line. As for his girlfriend, Sherry Frazier, she was working in this Calgary daycare center using her real name, giving a Nashville address as her hometown. The director of the daycare center said today she had no idea Frazier was connected with Tim Collins. No, nothing. I don't know anything about that. But as long as she worked for us, we found that she was very honest and a very kind girl. Frazier called the daycare center Friday, saying she would not return to work. She is being held by immigration authorities here pending a hearing. One bit of late information, we talked with Sherry Frazier and Tim Collins, attorney here in Calgary just a few moments ago. That immigration hearing that will be held Thursday, now Sherry Frazier has indicated she wants to come back to Nashville and more than likely immigration officials here will let her. Her family apparently wants her to come home, that's what the attorney said, and Tim Collins, he said, wants her to come home. As far as talking to us about the situation here, both Collins and Frazier have declined. Teddy? Jeff, what's the significance of, uh, of Sherry Frazier wanting to come back and uh, her boyfriend Tim Collins uh, endorsing that, that decision? Well, Teddy, at this point, there have been no formal criminal charges pressed against Sherry Frazier here in Calgary. She was not at the warehouse when uh, Collins and a couple other of his people were arrested here in Calgary. So she's not been charged in way along those lines, but immigration officials have talked to her, they have detained her. And more than likely, his, uh, her attorney told me that this evening that they will probably deport her, uh, consider her an undesirable type of an alien here. Do you know whether any uh, Nashville attorneys are on their way to Calgary, or if indeed they're there now, Jeff? Well, from what we can tell, no, Teddy, there has been none of that that we can see. It's being handled by counsel here in Calgary, and of course, if there's anything back in the United States, that will be handled by lawyers from Nashville. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. Jeff Eller from Newswatch 2 has been reporting live from Calgary all day on our newscasts. Federal, state, and local police officials have been Tim Collins' trail for two years, but up until now, all they've come up with are shadows. Now, while the search for Collins is now over, the extradition battle to get him back to Nashville has only just begun. Newswatch 2's Jim Gilchrist takes a look at Collins' background. 
Tim Collins was the pinball king of Nashville until a federal grand jury indicted him on racketeering charges in 1978. He was accused of mail fraud and threatening witnesses of a grand jury investigating him and of burning down buildings owned by his pinball competitors. When his federal trial came up in February of 79, Collins had jumped bail and skipped town. Federal agents began following his Hendersonville girlfriend, Sherry Fraser, and seven months later, it paid off. They caught the pair having dinner in a Murray, Kentucky restaurant. Collins then pleaded guilty to the federal charges and was placed in the Murray County Jail for safekeeping. But when they came to a cell in February of 80 to take him to federal court, all they found was a goodbye note. He had escaped, presumably with Frazier's help. Even though he has been caught again after two years, the memory of his 79 bail jumping is still painful for Brenda Bullock, owner of Athens Bonding Company. Her firm lost the $100,000 bail when Colin skipped, and then she lost another $42,000 trying to track him down. But Bullock says the bitterness she felt two years ago has faded. I'm not in it anymore. I'm not, you know, pursuing him anymore. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, that he's been caught. You know, I feel like he, if he is to do his time, he should do it like everybody else. And I sure hope they can hold on to him this time. Bullock says she hopes the book can now be closed on Tim Collins, especially for Collins' family. You know, they're real nice individuals. They really are. It's got to be pretty trying for them. I, you know, I sympathize with them, with that part. I really do. When Collins does come back to Nashville, in addition to his Canadian troubles, here he'll be facing 22 years behind bars. The 13 and a half year federal sentence he ran from, plus three and a half years for state convictions, and now five more years for escape. Jim Gilchrist, News Watch 2.